All right, let's get this list started. And at number 10, radiological emergency alert. Over in Georgia, Atlanta, people's phones were buzzing and going off with an alert that says, EAS radiological hazard warning, this is a test. The alert was sent around eight in the morning and people in the area were losing their minds. They actually believed that there was some form of like a deadly radiation exposure. Some people were complaining that when they heard this warning on their TVs or radios, it actually didn't mention anything about it, you know, only being a test. They thought this was for real. This was happening. This would for sure freak me out. And I definitely wouldn't leave my house until the news said that, you know, it was all clear. I'd be calling in sick into work and taking a paid radiological emergency day. Take shelter emergency alert tackles its way into this list at number nine. Verizon accidentally sent a scary alert to its customers telling people to take shelter. Well, that's a pretty big mess up. Well, you're looking at the alert right now. It says civil emergency in this area until 1:24 p.m. EST time. Take shelter now, U.S. Govern. I have so many questions. First of all, why is this message even pre-written? And why is there an exact time of 1:24 p.m.? I would be scared out of my mind if I saw this message. No one thought that this was just an accident because things like this just don't happen. Well, Verizon took blame for this. And let's just say that if I was a Verizon customer, I'd be switching cell phone providers. Up next on our list at number eight, broken outdoor warning signal. All right guys, it's time to brace yourselves for this one. You're about to hear a very scary sound. Could you imagine being asleep and then hearing this ominous alarm blast off in the middle of the night? It's definitely not how I would want to be woken up. In fact, I don't ever want to be woken up. I just want to wake up when I wake up. But in this situation, I'd probably jump out of bed or hide under the sheets because I'd be convinced that the end of the world was about to happen. And then it sounds like the signal is dying out at some parts. I guess he doesn't even want to hear the sound coming from his speaker either. San Francisco tsunami alarm storms its way onto this list at number seven. people still walking on the streets so calmly? I guess people living in San Francisco, well, I guess they're used to hearing the testing of the tsunami alarm, but as a tourist, I would either die instantly from a heart attack or I would be trying to find a safe place to take shelter. This alarm sounds like something bad is gonna happen and I wouldn't wanna wait around to see what bad thing is about to happen. Next up at number six, the very vague outdoor emergency alert. Is this real life right now? There's a literally zero details about what's happening. What is the emergency that they're talking about? And why do I have to stay inside? This alarm is making me feel super uncomfortable, but as it turns out, this outdoor warning system malfunctioned and self-activated in the early hours of the morning. Maybe someone desperately didn't wanna go into work, so they hacked the system. If that's the case, then I have so much respect for them. Gary Tornado alert takes us to number five. This next alarm is a pretty airy one because it can be heard echoing all over Dodge City, Kansas. Well, I found the clip for you guys, enjoy this. They are going about their daily business when tornado warnings are issued. Most people seek shelter, then information, but some take to the streets disoriented. Okay, America, what the heck is up with your sirens? Why do they have to be so terrified? All I have to say is, if I saw this tornado coming, I'd get the hell out of Dodge. Get it? The, the city's name is Dodge? Okay, all the dad jokes aside, what? I'm, I'm practicing here, guys. I'm about to be a father. Well, the tornado was probably making a beeline for the city, heard the alarm, and was like, nah. <laughs> I'm turning around going somewhere else. I'm heading to Canada. 156 emergency sirens go off simultaneously and this brings us to number four. People were panicking in Dallas when an evil hacker set off 156 emergency sirens over the weekend. At 11.42 p.m. Friday, the sirens are supposed to warn about approaching tornadoes, but there were no tornadoes. This is terribly freaky. 
Some even feared it might be a terrorist attack coming on the heels of the US missile launch against Syria. The alarms blasted off at 11.42 p.m. on Friday night, and although officials managed to shut them off, the hacker turned them back on. This went on for more than a dozen times throughout the night, and I guess it's safe to say that almost everyone in Dallas didn't get their beauty sleep that night. People were starting to think that terrorists were about to attack, but thankfully it was just a lonely hacker who clearly doesn't have anything better to do with their time. Don't have anything better to do with their lives. Moving things along, in number three, we have a nuclear attack warning against Canada and the United States. I'm not gonna lie, this warning would send me into complete panic mode. Maybe I should see something about how easily scared I am. Well, anyways, this was the alert. <laughs> Speakers were blaring this warning of an imminent nuclear attack against Canadians over in a popular Winnipeg neighborhood. The alert even went on to say this, all Canadian residents should seek out a fallout shelter immediately. If members of the Canadian Armed Forces direct you to a fallout shelter, please follow them for your safety. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau will be speaking on all stations shortly. Well this sounds pretty legit to me, but this cryptic message was nothing more than a prank. Probably a prank by President Donald Trump, trying to get rid of Justin Trudeau. Next up on our list, number two, we have the purge announcements. This doesn't sound that good. I know this alarm isn't technically real, but it does send chills down my spine whenever I hear it. This is not a test. This is your emergency broadcast system, announcing the commencement of the annual purge, sanctioned by the US government. Okay, what would you guys be doing if the purge was real? I mean, you are hearing that siren going off, and it's time to purge. <laughs> Let me know what you guys would do in the purge in the comment section below. But to be honest, if all crimes were illegal for 12 hours, I'd probably hit up my favorite store and grab whatever I'm able to carry. I'd probably break into a store, grab a lot of Pokemon cards, go in the Apple store, grab a few headphones. But I know a lot of crazy people would attempt to raid Area 51 one because you can't get arrested on purge day and uh, there's a lot of people who are curious to find out what's down there and of course this might be the biggest massacre in history air raid sirens in israel tops this list at number one People are literally running on the streets because they know exactly what this alarm means. This warning signals that incoming rockets are on their way. But thankfully, Israel has something called the Iron Dome, which is the defense system that was designed to intercept fired rockets. But still, I couldn't imagine living in a place where this is the norm. These people are living in constant fear, and they never really know how safe they are. Coming in at number 10, we have Handy Manny interrupted by porn. Early on a weekday morning in May 2007, kids in New Jersey, USA were eating their breakfast and watching a Disney Channel show, Handy Manny. Unfortunately, instead of seeing their favorite tool-wielding handyman, they saw, um, a tool-wielding handyman, but not a very kid-friendly one. Where is he putting that tool? It's the question. That's right, the broadcast was interrupted by hardcore pornography, which must have been pretty terrifying for the kids, but more so for the parents who found their kids watching it. Comcast, the cable network that Handy Manny was airing on, apologized, but never commented on how the interference came to be or who was behind it. The video is so graphic we can't show it yeah. and it goes on for almost six straight up. minutes. Coming into number nine we have a scary old couple conspiracy. In July 2007 ABC affiliate WJLA had their signal interrupted and something weird flashed up on the screen. It was a spooky picture and a grainy image of two elderly people. There was no sound involved, just the image. Creepy but not that bad right? Sure. However the plot thickens. The cable company brushed over it saying it was a programming mix up from an earlier Oprah show. Okay fine, so then why were all the video clips of the hijacking removed from YouTube immediately after? A lot of people think that the network was covering up for something way more sinister. Coming into number 8 we have Captain Midnight's protest. In 1986, a disgruntled electrical engineer named John McDougall was seriously peed at HBO for their high subscription prices. At the time, it was around $12.95 a month, which is about $30 today. McDougall called himself Captain Midnight and threatened to hijack stations periodically, targeting Showtime next. Coming into number 7, we have the Wyoming incident. In 2008, it is said that a local news network in Wyoming was 
broadcasting some coverage of the general election. However, the broadcast was interrupted by black and grey stripes with text reading, You will see such pretty things. This was followed by clips of disembodied human heads. Apparently, the pirate broadcast was shown at such a high frequency that it made some viewers vomit. Now, you can read a lot about the Wyoming incident on a creepypasta site or urban legend sites, however, I've been unable to find an official news source. This leads me to believe that it is just that, an urban legend. Coming into number 6, we have aliens on southern television. On November the 26th, 1977, a scary alien voice interrupted a British TV broadcast at 10 past 5 in the afternoon on ITV. Hijacking the Hannington transmitter, a scary speaker interrupted transmissions for 6 whole minutes. Now they claimed to be an alien called Virillan from the Intergalactic Association. With a distorted voice, Virillan said that all weapons of mass evil must be removed. He warned that humanity has a short time to learn to live together in peace. The voice implored humanity to remain peaceful so that we could be part of the great awakening of the age of Aquarius. The hijack was vocal only and later ITV called the hijacker breakthrough in sound. The identity of the hijacker has never been found. Perhaps it was aliens warning us. Coming into number 5, we have an atomic bomb. On a Sunday morning Czech TV show Panorama, viewers were convinced that the Prague countryside was being bombed. The show is intended to attract tourists and generally shows live footage of idyllic landscapes. On the 17th of June 2007, the signal was cleverly hijacked. What looked like scenes from the usual show broadcast an atomic bomb being detonated over the land. This sent viewers into an absolute panic. Now, government officials were even concerned that Prague was being bombed. It turned out it was an elaborate hoax, but it took a few minutes to realise that. The hoax was actually a performance piece from a group called Zetoven. Coming into number 4, we have news of the zombie apocalypse. In 2013, TV viewers in Montana were stunned when Steve Wilco's show on KRTV was interrupted by hackers. Pranksters interrupted the show to warn of a zombie apocalypse, saying that bodies of the dead were rising from their graves. They stated that updates would be posted as soon as new information became Came available. The mayhem happened amid an episode of Wilco's show about teen cheaters taking a lie detector test. Now, the hack was a voiceover only and warned viewers not to approach the zombies as they are extremely dangerous. Immediately after the hack was taken down, KPTV released a statement. They said the situation was under control and yes, it was just a hack. I have reported that the bodies of the dead are rising from their graves and attacking the living. Follow the messages on screen that will be updated as information becomes available. Coming into number 3, we have the first of Max Hadram's appearances. On November the 22nd, 1987, the Chicago 9 o'clock news was interrupted on WGN TV. Instead of host Dan Ronan discussing the Bears' victory over the Detroit Lions, the audience got a man in a mock news reporter suit wearing a creepy Max Hedrum mask with sunglasses and a frozen grin. All audiences could hear was static, all they could see was the maniac moving around as if he was being spanked. Now, it appears the TV signal was hijacked for 30 seconds. When the signal finally made it back to the studio, Ronan nervously laughed. Well, if you're wondering what happened, so am I. On this day, the creepy intruder became an icon. Now, we're building on this at number two. That's right, coming in at number two, we have the first time that Max Headroom speaks. Later, the same hijacker interrupted an episode of Doctor Who for around 90 seconds. In the secondary hijack, the plot thickened even further. This man got even creepier. The first hijack had no audio but the second was a rant. The creepy hijacker spouted about Coca-Cola, Chuck Swirsky and a dirty glove. After some weird lunging at the camera and head swishing and singing, the hijacker's bare bottom is spanked by an off-camera French maid. Making the whole saga even weirder, over 30 years later, we still have no idea who is responsible for the hijacking. Finally, most terrifying of all, because the threats were actually founded in reality, we have a very real declaration of war. In July 2006, Lebanese fighters fired shots over the Israeli border. This led to a 34 day war in which Israel retaliated hard. Israeli hackers took control of the Islamic Lebanese political party Hezbollah's TV station. They sent out a very chilling message of war. The hijack signal started showing images of dead Hezbollah guerrilla soldiers. An image of the political party leader, 
Sen Nasrallah was then shown, along with the sound of gunshots and a voice saying, Your day is coming. Coming in at number 10, let's start off with the most famous interruption. We have Max Headroom. This is an absolute classic, although I would be absolutely gutted if someone interrupted my episode of Doctor Who. I say my episode like I've ever been on it, but you know what I mean, watching it. The story goes that on the evening of November the 22nd, 1987, the good people of Illinois were enjoying an episode of Doctor Who in Chicago on WTTW Channel 11. The episode was Horror of Fang Rock, which thematically is a bit different, but if I'd seen this interruption, I guess I just would have thought it was part of the show because Doctor Who is famously sci fi and freaky. Suddenly, instead of watching the fourth Doctor's colourful antics, viewers saw a person in a Max Headroom mask and sunglasses. So Max Hedrum, for those of you like me who have no idea who that is slash was, was an AI TV character in the 80s and, well, in mask form, honestly, he looks pretty horrifying. The imposter hijacked the broadcast for 90 seconds in which he rambled about corporate America, Coca-Cola, the TV series Clutch Cargo, and oddly was throwing some shade at WGN anchor Chuck Swirsky. At the time, it was said that the perpetrator would face a maximum of 10000 dollars in fines or possibly even jail time. It turns out that the headroom figure had also interrupted an American football game for a short period of time too earlier that day. Now it's been 32 years since it happened and we're still none the wiser as to who did it and why, but here is a creepy clip of what viewers saw that day. And another. Okay, warning. Watching this next interruption may make you feel sick or make you hallucinate. Coming in at number 9, we have the Wyoming incident. Ah, uh, it's a popular internet urban legend, my favourite, but some people think it's real. Indeed, there appears to be evidence of it on YouTube, and as we know, we can always trust things we see on YouTube. So, the Wyoming incident is allegedly a broadcast hack that happened in 2008, affecting a number of TV viewers in the town of Nebrara in Wyoming. Did I say that right? Their regular news show was mysteriously interrupted. Wyoming today, making him the first to visit in preparation for the 2008 general election. Republican President <laughs> Jackson. They said, you will see such pretty things, you are ill, we just want to fix you and what hides in your mind. Honestly, that question was later answered with the chilling message, we've already seen it. Have another watch. Honestly, freakier still, those who saw the interruption reported having a physical reaction to the footage. Now, this included vomiting, hallucinations, headaches. Others said that the frequencies actually made viewers' eyeballs vibrate, creating a visual illusion. I don't know if anything can make my eyeballs vibrate, that's mental. Now, some deny the incident ever happened, and others say that it was viral marketing for an interactive online game. Moving on to number eight, we have the Bible busting Playboy. Playboy is, well, you know what Playboy is, I think. Also, they have a late night TV show mainly comprised of busty ladies and sexy time. Like, honestly, you do you, whatever. Playboy has always been controversial, especially in the past when people felt more strongly about sex being a sin. With that in mind, let me tell you what happened in September 1987. So someone, we don't know who, interrupted the broadcast late at night with a quote from the Bible. Now the verses seem to be taken from Exodus and Matthew and read, Thus saith the Lord thy God, remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Would I be a good preacher? I don't know. Probably not. So it all appeared in black and white text during a naughty movie. Now, a number of perturbed viewers phoned in to ask what was happening. Was it some kind of mysterious divine intervention? Like, stop watching Playboy. Honestly, though, I don't think it was necessarily the most applicable Bible verse, but whatever. Coming in at number seven, we have Anonymous versus Fox News. Dear Fox News, it has come to our attention that you have been alienating the American people by propagating the left-right. Ah, uh, 
good old Hacktivation station. I think hacktivist is my favourite word of this century. In 2015, Anonymous, known for their creepy smiling Guy Fawkes masks and altered voices, took over a live Fox News broadcast. Now, Fox News was conducting a euthanasia interview when Anonymous took over. Now, they started by saying, Dear Fox News, it has come to our attention that you have been alienating the American people by propagating the left right. They continued by berating Fox for purposefully scaring people about terrorism and covering up corporate corruption. Anonymous said, You have sacrificed your journalistic integrity for the dollar. They end by saying Fox have been poisoning the minds of America for too long. Anonymous does not forgive, Anonymous does not forget. Scary. Honestly, I kind of, I don't know, I don't know if I like Anonymous or not, but their masks do freak me out. The mystery here to me lies in who Anonymous really are. We just don't know yet. And also, how can they take down such a big and powerful station like Fox? Coming in at number six, we have Captain Midnight. So, who is Captain Midnight? Well, that really is the question. He sounds maybe a bit more glamorous than he actually is. Captain Midnight was an adventure franchise, but in this instance, it was a character constructed by a disgruntled HBO employee who was livid at the channel for raising their subscription prices to $12.95 a month, which I think is around the equivalent of $30 today. The interruption included a threat to the Showtime movie channel too. They simply said, beware. Then there was a period of black and white messed signal. Honestly, have a little watch. All of the cracking and buzzing throughout this is supposed to be HBO station trying to get their power back and Captain Midnight fighting by upping his power, which actually really does sound like an exciting superhero fight. Eventually HBO lost and was forced to stop at risk of blowing their transmitters. Okay, a little mid-list urban legend for you. Coming in at number 5, we have Baby Ogre at Midnight. It's a fine day, people open windows, they leave their houses just for a short while. So the Baby Ogre commercial is a Japanese ad for Kleenex, which sure is weird. The story goes that the commercial was hijacked by a curse, and after it aired in 1986, everyone involved died or met some kind of horrible luck. For example, the woman who was supposed to have birthed a demon baby in the advert died after actually giving birth in real life. Further urban legends say that if you watch the video, if you watch the commercial at midnight, the footage will be interrupted and will warp in front of your very eyes and you too will become a victim of the curse. Some people in the YouTube comment section for this video say that they have seen the commercial at midnight and it was interrupted and they are cursed, so watch out, I guess. Coming into number four, we have the mysterious couple. Hmm. I also do quite like just going hmm sometimes. During regular broadcasting on ABC's affiliate WJLA, this image appeared on screen for several seconds. It's a grainy looking couple. CGI? To this day, nobody is sure exactly what this picture is of and what it means. It kind of looks like a computer generated riff on theatre masks, like a happy one and a sad one. This image appeared briefly with absolutely no context and no sound before vanishing off the screen. Many people said that there was a dark meaning meaning to all of this, that this was no ordinary interruption. The cable company in charge of the broadcast said that there was a programming mix up, which like, okay, fine, but then I have to say, the plot does thicken. Some people uploaded videos of the interruption to YouTube, but all of the videos were wiped due to quote unquote restricted access, and then all online accounts of the incident seem to have been wiped from the internet too, which is really weird. Coming in at number 3, we have the Winkers song. In in June and July 2017, a UK local radio station, Mansfield 103.2 FM, had its signal interrupted eight times throughout June and July 2017 with an indecent piece of music called The Winker Song by Ivor Biggin and the Red Nosed Burglars. Back in the day, this song was banned from the radio because it is very blatantly about masturbation. I actually listened to this whole song while scripting this video, and it is pretty great and absolutely not appropriate. Anyone with a love of CD British humour, please do have a listen. The last 20 seconds are what I would describe as pure magic. So, what this frequent interruption means it's hard to say, but clearly it's a symbol of anarchy. The perpetrator has never been identified and honestly, I kind of think long may they reign. I'm so bad, I'm so naughty. I'm oh, giggling away at the interruptions. Coming 
then at number 2 we have the aliens of area 51. Coast to Coast AM was a talk show run by a chap called Art Bell, now he was pretty famous or infamous I should say in his day, he did used to get a lot of strange calls on the show. The incident that took place on September the 12th 1997 really takes the biscuit though. That night Art got a call from a guy who claimed to have been an employee at area 51, which obviously is the conspiracy base for the US Air Force where people say, you know, there were aliens that crash landed and were studied. The caller sounded absolutely terrified and claimed that they were coming for him, whoever they are. He said that he did not have much time to share with the world what he knew about Area 51. He talked about extra dimensional beings who are not what they appear to be. He said that they have infiltrated the US military and are now quote unquote taking over. So give us something quick. Okay, um um, okay, well, what we're thinking of as, as aliens are, they're, uh, they're, they're extra dimensional beings. The caller began to sound even more erratic and panicked and finally he started talking about how governments are trying to get human populations down to a manageable number so they're easier to control, which does sound like some conspiracy stuff to me. Just after this the line went dead when the power cut out at the station. Now that's pretty fishy right? By the time they got the backup generators running the cooler was gone. Now theorists do say it was more than a coincidence that the cooler was cut off and then never heard from again just when he began talking talking about the government. I mean, what do you think? Is Area 51 real? Have aliens infiltrated the military? Nah. Alright, speaking of aliens, this is one of my favourite mysterious broadcast interruptions. We have the story of Virillon. On a cold winter's night in the south of the UK in the 1970s, an alien interrupted the news, or so the story goes. In a regular newscast, Southern TV's news anchor Andrew Gardner was regaling the day's news headline when at 10.05pm the TV picture started wobbling and the the sound of the news anchor's measured delivery was all of a sudden replaced by a distorted alien voice. This voice then hijacked the station for nearly six minutes. The voice proclaimed to be a one Virillon, a representative of the Ashtar Galactic Command. He said, For many years you have been seeing us as lights in the sky. We speak to you now in peace and wisdom as we have done to your brothers and sisters all over this planet, your planet Earth. We come to warn you of the destiny of your race and your world so that you may communicate communicate to your fellow beings the course that you must take to avoid the disaster which threatens your world and the beings in our worlds around you. Use the word world a lot, have a listen for yourself. <laughs> So if you don't quite understand what he's saying, he's warning about false leaders and prophets putting money into evil pursuits. He ends the speech by imploring planet earth to change its ways before it's, I quote, too late. Blimey. It really is still a mystery as to who is behind this prank. If it was a prank it could have been, you know, like an actual alien. I for one absolutely hope that in the past 40 years Virillan and the gang have been working on clear transmissions because honey barely understood a word of that. <laughs>